Amen. 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 It's good to be in the house on today. I see Mr. Ricky in the back. Amen. Amen. Come with me. Back to the Gospel of Matthew. Chapter number four. Verse 23. My Lord, my Lord. And Jesus went about all Galilee, yes. teaching in their synagogues, yes. preaching the gospel of the kingdom, yes. and healing all kinds of sickness Amen. and all kinds of disease among the people. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. 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 For a few moments. I want to encourage you from the subject of coming and keeping church. If for a thing, we serve a coming and keeping God. So we should be a coming and keeping church. Amen. As we go forth by faith into what we view as the unknown. Church, it is important that we don't lose sight of our relationship with God and the responsibilities that come with it. As we strive to keep the house of God naturally, temporally, and spiritually thriving, is important that we don't lose sight of our relationship with God well, yes. and the responsibility that come with it. Well said, well said. As we prepare ourselves and others to be beacons of light in the darkness of times we live in, it is important that we don't lose sight of our relationship with God and the responsibilities that come with it. With a made up mind to teach the truth about God, to preach and live the gospel message to the best of our ability, and to bring a healing presence to the land of the shadow of death, it is important that we don't lose sight of our relationship with God and the responsibilities that come along with it. As we focus on our relationship with God, we must constantly remind ourselves of what we should be doing and what we should not be doing. Yes. Let us reveal in Mark chapter 13, verses 30 and 31, where it tells us our disciplistic instructions and they are to love the Lord our God with all our heart all our soul with all our mind and with all our strength and we are to love our neighbor yes. as we love ourselves but ask yourself what takes place when we live life God's way? All right. When we live how God wants us to live, He brings gifts into our lives the same way that vegetation appears in the garden. We call that fruit. God's Spirit, my brothers and my sisters produces things like affection for others. It produces excitement about life in Him. And we have a sense of peace during our trial and tribulation. Furthermore, sister, sister, we develop a willingness to stick with the 
assignments in times of oppression. We have a greater sense of compassion for other people even when we are done wrong. And we have the belief that the holiness of God, Mother Wright, has the ability to impregnate those around us. All right. yes. We find ourselves when we're caught up in Jesus and having loyal commitments. Yes. We feel no need to have to push our own agendas. And we are able to organize and direct our energy wisely. With that understood, I want us to know, and I, I, I myself need to internalize this too, that our relationship with God must always be at the forefront. I'm going to say that again. Our relationship with God must be in the most important place in our lives. And our relationship with God should always be in the process of growing. It should be growing stronger and stronger every day. As believers, we should never get to the point of stagnation. Because we understand that stagnant water is poisonous. We should never get to the point where we are stagnant in God. And we must learn to hold ourselves accountable. In those times when we engage our assignment for the growth of the kingdom, but we lose sight of who runs the kingdom. We have to take a few moments and encourage ourselves as a church to simply stay focused. In the midst of our going, our teaching, our preaching, and our healing, we will deal with negativity. We will come across persecution. But when we come up against negativity, and when we come up again against persecution, it is our mandate to trust God. And lean on our faith. Many times we'll be trying our best to be our best. And we will feel unappreciated. But we have to continue to trust God. And grow our faith. We do our best to be attentive to the Spirit. Yet we find ourselves in situations that seem dark. But we must continue to trust God and build our faith. In time of blessedness, unexpected adversity is going to come, but we must continue to trust God. And as the people of God, we must be willing to share our faith. The songwriter says, he abides in me. He gives me victory. For God, he never fails. Just keep your faith and never cease to pray. Just walk up right, call a new day of night. Hear me now. My brothers and my sisters, there's no need to worry on today because God, he has never failed us yet. It is important as we engage the work assigned to us by God to not only keep the faith, uh -huh. but we must continually remind ourselves who God is. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we must regularly yes. absorb yes, who God is. Yes. My Lord, my Lord. Not only must we continually internalize who God is, we must understand from a humanistic perspective how he has operated in his word. Yes, my Lord. 
and how he is going forth on today. We understand from our study of God holistically that he is a covenant or an agreement making God. Yes. 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 yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's a covenant sustaining God. And he's a covenant keeping God. So as we engage to ministry, no matter what comes our way, we must remember that we are in covenant with him. And because we are in covenant with God, there are certain requirements linked to the covenant that we're in. Are y'all with me on today? My brothers and my sisters, as we go, as we teach, as we preach, and as we heal, we are to love God with everything that we have. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. And we are to love. Honor. Look out for and respect one another. Furthermore, we understand the byproduct, Deacon's Latin, of being in covenant with God should be contagious holiness. Yeah. yeah. Somebody missed that. Yeah. Hey, come on. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> the byproduct of us being connected to God contagious is contagious holiness. Yes, Not only do we have contagious holiness, but we walk and we move with unconditional love. And we have joy. A speak of joy. And when we're connected to God, we have peace of mind even in the midst of the storm. And we move with patience. Kindness. Goodness. Faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. My brothers and my sisters, there should be edible, tangible fruit that stems from our tree as we are connected to the true life. Covenant keeping God yeah. means we should be a covenant keeping church. Yeah. Yeah. This means if you willingly and lovingly keeps his covenant promises to us, uh-huh. we should willingly and lovingly do our best to keep our covenant promises to him. Yes. And we do this. Leon, even in the land of the shadow yes. of death. Yes. Yeah. Well, well, well. Minister Riggins, we understand that the author of this text on today is the former tax collector, Matthew of Galilee. He was called by Jesus, and he was sick by Jesus. Matthew's aim is to give an engaging account of the life of Jesus. And it is his desire that those who don't know him get to know him. And those who know him get to know him just a little bit better. But right, we understand by our years under the word of God and in the word of God that Matthew of Galilee is the author of one of the four Gospels. Yes. Y'all with me? Yeah. Wait, wait. As we observe and as we grow, we understand that the primary purpose of all four Gospel writers is to present Jesus yeah. as more than a man. Glory. Glory. Stay right there. Yes. Glory. That's good. We understand that he is presented as the very son, very son of God. Uh-huh. Yes. And apart from this central truth, everything
Anything else would have no consequence. Well, yeah. It would mean nothing if he was not the son of God. But we understand that what Jesus said was the word of God. And what he did and how he lived, even in the land of the shadow of death, was the work of God. I want to simply encourage you as those who have a mindset to press forward in the midst of the circumstances that we now dwell in. Let what you say be the word of God. And let how you live be a result of the work of God. Remember our commission is to go and make disciples. While our mandate is to love God and love one another, even in the land consumed by darkness. Yeah. But check this out. The land may be consumed with darkness, but the church should never be. Yeah. Somebody missed that. Yeah. The land may be consumed with darkness, yeah. but the church should never be consumed with darkness. Yeah. Why? Because this is a house of the true and living God. And in this house dwell the light of life, the bread of life, living water. When we examine the work Jesus did in Galilee of the Gentiles, Matthew lets us know that Jesus was going all about Galilee. And the term going about which Matthew uses comes from the Greek, indicating to us that Jesus' actions were repeated and continuous. And as Jesus was going about repeatedly and continuously, he was teaching the word God in an expository nature. What does that mean? He read the scripture to the people and he explained what it meant so that they had understanding. And Jesus went into the synagogues proclaiming or preaching the gospel of the kingdom. I want you to grasp this fact that, his, that in his preaching, he announced the good news. In his teaching, he explained the good news. He validated his preaching. Let us understand that Jesus taught. He preached in the synagogues of Galilee among the people. And the synagogues provided Jesus with the first platforms for teaching and preaching. Let us understand that almost every community, no matter what size, in Galilee of the Gentiles, you would have found a synagogue, or as we call it, a church. Well. Let us understand that the synagogues at these times, at this time, was the cornerstone of the community. And the synagogues served as public schools for the boys when they learn to read and write. They also studied the Talmud, which is the Jewish law, and they learned basic arithmetic. For the men, the synagogue was a place of advanced theological study. It was a Bible college. The synagogue also was a place a worship every Sabbath, and the Sabbath began sundown on Friday to sundown Saturday. Right. And also throughout the week, <laughs> they had what we call worship services. Why is this important? Because in the synagogues were the ones who were sincere about God. That is the place where you experience 
expected to find sincere Israelites Amen. who were willing to hear and accept the divine message. Also, as we know that Jesus goes for preaching and teaching and he heals all kinds of infirmities. And we see that Jesus engaged in strong ministry. And we understand that Jesus was with the people, but never carried himself like the people. Let us understand this theological principle. Jesus worked and he served among the people to bring a great light to the land of the shadow of death. But he never carried himself like the people in the land of the shadow of death. Therefore, we should be able to work among the people Amen. in the land of the shadow of death without compromising our covenant relationship with God. All right. As Jesus does the work of God, we understand that he never loses fellowship with the Father in the midst of being among the people. My brothers and my sisters, since we are in covenant or in agreement with God, we need to simply strive to stay connected to God and do what we are supposed to do among the people. Jesus never allowed himself to get sidetracked into economics, social issues, politics, or personal disputes. See, he knew about them, but he never let them distract him. His teaching and his preaching focused entirely on expounding God's word and proclaiming the kingdom. Well, my brothers and my sisters, this is a sound pattern for every faithful messenger of the gospel. We are to stay connected to God no matter what we endure. So what does the church need to do to be a covenant keeping entity in the land of the shadow of death? Number one, a covenant-keeping church, we must have an effort to be holy carriers and distributors of the light of life. That means that we are vessels that carry Jesus' word to a dying world. And we do this by living our service. Not just preaching our sermons. Number two, to be a covenant keeping church, we must do our best to be loving and respectful of God and to one another without taking any breaks. One of the worst things that I've seen in the church is what I call the lay down ministry. Don't make me lay down. My salvation. Don't make me lay down my religion and tell you what I need to tell you. But we should always be loving one another and holding up the bloodstained banner no matter what comes our way. And that's what I think. Point number three. If we're going to be a covenant-keeping church, we must willing we must be willing to be accountable first to God, honest with ourselves, and accountable to one another. My brothers and my sisters, if we want to engage the work like Jesus engaged the work, we must understand this is a search and a rescue operation. In the midst of hard times, 
And in our broken moods, keep your hand in God's hand. This is a search and a rescue operation. We may not be the most popular. We may not be number one on everybody's list. We may not be the most eloquent speakers in the church. We may not have the highest education among our colleagues. We may not be the most creative. But I want you to remember something. God equips those that he's called. This is the search and the rescue operation. Trouble, heartache and pain may cause hesitation in our ministries. I want you to trust God for the healing. And thank God for the direction. Because this is the search and the rescue operation. Our goal is to bring them out, not get caught up in a snare. Move like Jesus moved. Because this is a search and a rescue operation. See, the song where it says, though friends may deride and forsake you and leave you alone in the way. Remember the promises of Jesus because he's only a prayer away. See, my brothers and my sisters, if we're going to be a covenant-keeping church, we must remember the promises of Jesus. If our choice is to answer the call of Christ, we must remember the promises of Jesus. Tell your neighbor 99 and a half on two. We must remember the promises of Jesus. We are going to love with the love of Jesus. We are going to be connected with the commitment of Jesus. We are going to interact and behave like Jesus. We are going to move with the compassion of Jesus. We're going to serve with the captain of Jesus. We won't be scared of the unknown. We will serve with the courage of Jesus. I'll be meek and heavy laden. Come with a load of care. Precious Savior. Be still our refuge. HMBC take it to the Lord in prayer. See the road may be uneven, but Jesus is our refuge. He's our strength and He's our help. We may be experiencing persecution. He's our refuge, our strength, and our help in our time of separation and in our time of grieving. He's still our refuge. Our strength and he's our help. Sometimes the burden of ministry it may seem overwhelming. Sometimes there's a lot of work and it seems like the labor of us do. Jesus is still our refuge, our strength, and our help because Jesus is our shelter. Because Jesus is our power source, and because Jesus is our helping hand, He can be a covenant keeping church. Because we love God with all that we have, we can be a covenant keeping church. Because we love others like we love ourselves, we can be a covenant keeping church. When we are committed to keep it going, when we are committed to teaching the gospel, when we are committed to preaching the truth, when we are committed to healing, we can be a covenant church. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I decided to follow Jesus. You know what no fit is. I'm still going to follow him. No turning back. No turning back. I will carry my burden. I will carry my cross. I will deal with the pain. I will deal with the suffering. No turning back. No turning back. The Lord behind me. The cross before me. No turning back. I want to tell you something.